Back with Adrielle Booker, and she's the author of this great book called Grace Like Scarlet, Grieving with Hope After Miscarriage and Loss. And so you've just shared with us your loss of Grace, Scar uh, Scarlet Grace, and um, a few years later, you lose Oliver. Mm -hmm. And you identify yourself in the book as patient 788. Mm -hmm. Tell me about that experience and that loss. Yeah, you know, our first loss, we were blindsided, as I said, but we genuinely thought it was a one-off. Mm -hmm. We knew how common it is, one in four pregnancies and in miscarriage, mm -hmm. so we knew it was common, we knew it was normal. Um, but when it happened again, mm -hmm. <laughs> it was like we were hit by a semi-truck, just yeah. blindsided all over again. It was such a shock to realize this wasn't a one-off. And I was actually in Rome at the mm -hmm. time, and um, we had been at St. Peter's Basilica listening to Pope Francis mm. give a blessing. And visiting a friend as well. Yeah, visiting a friend. And I knew that something was wrong. And um, I, I never in a million years would have thought I would end up in a hospital in Rome having my second miscarriage. Mm. Patient 788. And as you sat there, something very interesting that you identified, and I've heard this said uh, by those that I know that have gone through miscarriage, is you're, you're describing sitting in this hospital hallway, lying actually in field position, just crying, as you're seeing all of these pregnant women coming through who have these expected, are expecting babies and knowing mm. that you just lost yours. Mm. Describe that feeling, because I've heard it time and time again, the almost the insensitivity of our system that we would put somebody who is experiencing loss with women who are experiencing this hope. It was brutal, Maggie. Yeah. I, um, in the examination room, there were two beds with a curtain in between, and here I was being examined for miscarriage, and there was a woman next to me behind the curtain with the Doppler thumping mm -hmm. with the heartbeat. And you know, what's normally a beautiful sound just was devastating to hear. And I felt like, can I not get a shred of privacy? Yeah. And then, yeah, they put me on a bed in the hallway. Mm -hmm. And I thought, here I am with these women, and I didn't want to cry in front of them. I didn't want to make them be fearful for their own pregnancy. And yet, I was experiencing this loss. and. I did, I started sobbing there on the bed in the hallway in this whole row of expectant moms. I could just start to hear the sniffles come and they all knew what was going on. You know, language barrier or not, they knew exactly what was going on. And um, it is, it's hard. And it's, it's hard when someone else's joy is in the same shape of your pain. Yeah. Yeah. And then a couple years later, you lose Ruby, mm -hmm. your last miscarriage. Mm -hmm. You talk, Adriel, about how even in the midst of so much pain that you found hope in Jesus. Mm -hmm. Describe to me how that happens. Mm -hmm. You know, my faith is the most important thing in my life, so mm -hmm. we just have to start there. Mm -hmm. And I have this, and, and have for a long time, this unrelenting belief that God is good. Mm -hmm. And so even when we had our first miscarriage, I knew that God was good, but I had to figure out how to find him in the midst of that. And the best metaphor that I can sort of use to describe that is the metaphor of waves. You know, it's often used in the grief community that grief comes like waves. And sometimes you're expecting them, sometimes you're blindsided by these waves that come as you grieve. But I learned that I couldn't outrun this. Mm -hmm. You can't outrun them, you can't try to jump over them, they'll pummel you. Mm -hmm. You've gotta dive in. And that metaphor helped me to understand that I have to, even in the midst of my pain, I have to dive in to Jesus. And I have to know that he is actually present with us even in the suffering. Mm. And you're not experiencing this alone. You have a husband, mm -hmm. obviously. How is Ryan dealing with all mm -hmm. of that? You know, I, it's a... It's such an important topic that we include men yeah. in on the conversation. I think, you know, for him, um, his, his immediate reaction was just, how do I take care of my wife? Mm -hmm. and, and I think that's pretty common. Mm -hmm. You know, how do I take care of my wife? The, the loss is less tangible for him because for a woman, your whole body is involved yeah. from the moment of conception. We feel different. Yeah. 
And um, and so for men, they they go on a journey of growing into that reality of that there's a baby inside. Mm -hmm. So I think for him, uh, he really struggled with even knowing how to respond. Mm -hmm. And even to the point where he was questioning, you know, why isn't my grief like Adriel's? Mm. And so we had to learn to talk through our grief and realize that there's not one way to grieve. Um, but, but dads are important too. It's, it's important that we link them in on this conversation. Yeah. As we uh, close our time, Adriel, what is one piece of advice that you can give friends, families, husbands, spouses, mm -hmm. as they journey with someone through a miscarriage? What is the most important thing that we can provide? Mm. The ministry of presence, mm. being with someone. Mm. The whole gospel story is about Jesus coming and moving into the middle of our mess, mm. not running from it or being intimidated by it or trying to put a pat answer on it. But he just came to be with us. Yeah. And I think as believers, that's what we can do for others, mm. is we just come and we say, I want to hold space for your pain. I'm not going to run away from it. I want to be with you in mm. that and know that you're here. And then practical things. You know, I like to tell people that um, having a miscarriage is like giving birth mm. and grieving a death all at once. Oh. And so the same things that you would do for a new mom. You know, her body is thrust into turmoil. She's emotionally all, all over the place. Mm. She might be all sorts of things. She might be leaking milk. You mm. know, physically it's brutal. And so to care for her tenderly and treat her as if she's postpartum, but also as if she lost someone very dear. Mm. And so you bring the flowers, you bring the casserole, you show up. Mm. Oh, well said. <laughs> the name of the book is Grace Like Scarlet, Grieving with Hope. Mm. After miscarriage and loss. It's such an important topic. Yeah. And I know that many of you have gone through that pain. And I love what Adriel said. Sometimes the ministry of silence, sometimes you just don't know what to say. And sometimes that's the best thing to do, is just sit in the silence and grieve with that person. If you've gone through a miscarriage, call our prayer lines. Our prayer partners would love to do just that. Pray with you and just sit and listen to you. The number's at the bottom of our screen, 1-866-273-4444. Stay with us. We'll be right back.